Being rewarded for working hard is all well and good. Oh, yeah, thanks, Gran. That 50p you gave me for cleaning out your gutters, yeah, that'll come in real handy. But sometimes it can be even better to be rewarded for doing literally nothing at all. Like getting an A on the project you merely slapped your name on. Or your boss mistaking that lazy nap for exhaustion and giving you the rest of the day off with full pay. While it may be morally questionable in real life, in video games, it's a-okay. The following games are the ones that said, it's okay to slow things down. Go on, have a break, make yourself a nice cup and put your feet up for a while. And hey, here's an achievement or a nice shiny trophy for your troubles. The games that, for a moment at least, would prefer you did literally anything else other than actually play them. So I'm... <sighs> Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are 10 times video games rewarded us for doing absolutely nothing. Number 10, Madden NFL 06, Enter History Book. Hailing from the land of blighty ourselves, what oh, what oh, apples and pears, etc., American football isn't quite the phenomenon over here as it is in the States. Even so, just looking at all those burly men charging up and down the field and crashing into one another over and over again is enough to make us sweat. So we're glad Madden NFL 06 included an achievement for the less sporty among us. The name Enter History Book is rather a misleading one. Based on that moniker alone, it sounds as though players will have to do something absolutely outstanding to pop this achievement and get their names into the history books. Play a perfect season, maybe. Win the Super Bowl with your hands tied behind your back. Or get a home run from the three-point line. Or whatever it is that football players do. But no! To get this achievement, players have to literally enter a history book by opening one up. All players have to do to get a nifty 10 gamer score is to start franchise mode from the main menu, select a team and then scroll down to history book to see that team's records and hear the familiar chime. That's all she wrote. Funnily enough, the jock must become the nerd to unlock this one. Number 9. Deadpool. Patience is not a virtue. Another fun thing about being British, this is the last time we'll bring it up I swear, is that we love a good queue. If we're not moaning about the weather, we're queuing up for a nice sausage roll, or vegan sausage roll, from Greg's. So imagine our surprise when a game actually offered us a reward for standing in one place for minutes on end. While it wasn't Game of the Year material when it first came out, Deadpool is still worth playing if you enjoy a bit of crude humour or hearing the ever ubiquitous Nolan North talk to himself in funny voices. While it usually promotes action at all costs, there is one point where players will be rewarded for doing nothing. In the Death Baby level, after speaking to Death and picking the orange statue, players will be teleported to the back of a queue at a grimy carnival. They are then given the option, patience or think quick. Naturally, this being Deadpool, players will gravitate towards think quick, jump the queue and get back to the killing. However, being patient and waiting for all the goons in front to take their ticket will reward the player with the patience is not a virtue trophy. And all it cost was five minutes of their life. Totally worth it. Number eight, Prince of Persia, Precious Time. It's always nice when a game actively encourages the player to take a little breather. Yes, your only companion might have died, and you're unsure how life can go on without her, but just put the controller down for a moment and relax. You've earned it. The Prince of Persia series has gone through many iterations over its nearly three and a half decade lifetime. From side-scrolling adventures to emo 3D action and back to 2D side-scrolling again, but no matter the game, forward momentum is a must. So it may come as a shock that the 2008 cel-shaded reboot Prince of Persia asks the player to slow things down for a minute. Right at the end of the game, final boss Araman, the shadowy lord of darkness, is defeated and sealed back within the tree of life. However, this comes at a cost, namely the life of Elika, Princess of Light and the Prince's sole companion. But when the cutscene ends, don't move! Instead, players should rest for a minute and reflect, and they'll be rewarded with the precious time achievement for their troubles. Seeing as leaving the temple triggers an epilogue in which the prince undoes all of his hard work, resurrecting Elika and allowing the world to fall to corruption, it might have been best never to have moved at all. Number 7. Journey. Reflection. 
Many people play video games to relax after a long day of school or work, but I for one have never found being yelled at by teenagers on Call of Duty all that relaxing. I'm sorry I'm not a better shot, I'm an adult now, my fingers aren't as dexterous as they once were, so it's great to see a game advocate true relaxation in the form of meditation. That game company's journey has its moments of peril and its moments of excitement, but above all, it is a beautiful, reflective and abstract experience, playing as much the player's emotions as the light them with the wondrous visuals and music. Already this isn't the game to get the heart pounding, but if you find that gliding through ancient ruins and sliding down sand dunes starts to raise your heart rate a little too much, you can always slow things down further. The beauty of Journey can be experienced alone or with a stranger, but if you want to pop this trophy, you'll need to find another willing participant. In contrast to most multiplayer offerings, Journey only allows players to interact through song and meditation. Take 20 seconds to drop everything and meditate with a stranger, and the reflection trophy is all yours. I wouldn't attempt this in other multiplayer games though. Try meditating in Call of Duty and see how far that gets you. I dare ya. Number 6. The Darkness. Romantic. The life of a hitman for the mob isn't all gunfights and garrottings. Sometimes it's about taking time out of your busy schedule to curl up on the couch with your girlfriend to watch a good film together. The Darkness is, wouldn't you guess it, a dark game. After protagonist Jackie Estacado is targeted for assassination by a mafia don, a strange power wakes up inside him. The power to tear foes apart and eat their hearts with two hungry tentacle arms. From there, the game hardly ever slows down taking the player from one shooting gallery of goons to the next. However, there is one chapter that allows them to breathe, a quiet night in watching a film on the sofa with Jackie's girlfriend Jenny. Players can get up at any time, but they need to wait until Jenny falls asleep to get this achievement. It only takes around a minute to pop, but if players stay put, they can actually watch the entirety of the film to kill a mockingbird on Jenny's TV. And they may as well watch it all, because a short while later Jenny is kidnapped and things only get worse from there. Ugh, that was a good film. What are we playing again? Something about mobsters and tentacle arms. Number 5. Uncharted A Thief's End Stage Fright If people aren't going to forget your mistakes, you may as well own them. That's precisely what developers Naughty Dog did after a little bit up on stage during E3 2015. When they launched into their gameplay demo for the upcoming Uncharted 4, the initial applause gave way to quiet laughter as technical problems left a big action hero Nathan Drake just standing around like a lemon. A quick restart solved the problem, and old Nate overcame his nerves and was able to throw himself into the chaotic action the series is known for, but while the demo was one heck of a showstopper and the perfect way to close Sony's showcase, fans wouldn't forget this technical malfunction anytime soon. So it tickled fans funny bones the world over when Uncharted 4 included a little nod to the misstep. If players reach the exact same spot in the game, watch the cutscene and refuse to move afterwards for 30 seconds or so, the trophy stage fright will pop as a reward. It's not often you see developers making light of their mistakes like this, and it's nice to know that Naughty Dog has a sense of humour about these things. Number 4. Stray. Productive Day. Being a cat must be so tough. Roaming the streets, your heart's content, no responsibilities, and an owner who feeds you and takes care of your every whim. <laughs> Sounds exhausting. No wonder cats sleep all the time. If you've ever wondered what it would be like to be a cat for a day, Stray is the game for you. Taking control of a stray cat as they explore the post-apocalyptic cyberpunk city overrun with charming robots and considerably less charming zerks, players are let loose to explore every nook and cranny, and they can do so in the most cat-like way imaginable, effortlessly leaping over gaps and onto precarious ledges with all the grace of well, a cat. But if all that leaping about and knocking cups off tables starts to wear them out, players can always opt to curl up somewhere warm and take a nap. Sleeping has no real benefit other than to provide a relaxing break, but if the player chooses to sleep for one hour, they will unlock the productive day achievement. The bedding beside Morusk is our pick for the best spot, as while you sleep, he'll play the music he's learned. Oh, don't mind me. All this sleeping has made me tired. Just let me have a five minute cat nap. Number three, Xenoblade Chronicles. Some help you are. In most games, AI teammates are about as useful as a non-stick sellotape. You're out of luck if you're relying on them to get you out of a tough situation, is what we're saying. Xenoblade Chronicles, however, is not like other games for many reasons. 
The first game in a series of action RPG sci-fi games that, despite their dense and ever-expanding quasi-scientific, quasi-religious lore, have gone on to win critical acclaim. Xenoblade Chronicles puts players in the shoes of Shulk, a young scientist and wielder of the Monado, a magic sword that he uses to fight back the nefarious Mechon army. I told you there was a lot of lore. While combat is a core part of the game, and players must get to grips with it in order to triumph, Shulk's allies are more than capable of fending for themselves. In fact, if the player starts a fight, but then stands back and does nothing, there's a very good chance their AI companions will do all the dirty work for them. Winning a fight without Shulk landing a hit on the enemies will grant the player the aptly named achievement, Some Help You Up, forever memorialising the time they hid in the back and let someone else fight their battles for them. Number 2. Portal 2. You made your point. If there are two things fans love about Portal 2, they are the brilliantly innovative and mind-bending puzzles, and Stephen Merchant's side-splittingly stellar performance as Wheatley. The only thing that could make them better would be melding them together, right? Wrong. While he makes for a riotous partner in crime as he joins the player in their attempt to escape the crumbling facility, he falls flat when it comes to being a devious mastermind. Partway through the game, Wheatley succumbs to his newfound power and sabotages Chell's escape. When the player meets him again, he's devised a new series of tests to complete, only they're not very good. Going up a lift near the start of chapter 8, players find themselves in a chamber with the word test written ominously across the wall, and see Wheatley looking down on them like some Machiavellian mastermind. The problem is, this test consists of pressing a single button to drop a cube on a pressure plate and open the exit, hardly Mensa level stuff. If the player finds this too insultingly easy, they can simply refuse to participate. Wait around for 30 seconds and the trophy you made your point will pop and a frustrated Wheatley will literally tell you the answer. If only every test chamber were this easy. And number one, the Stanley Parable, go outside. A good number of the games on this list ask the player to take a break for a short while, be that a quick minute's reflection or an hour long nap. But the Stanley Parable, true to form, takes things to the extreme. When it's not breaking the fourth wall and questioning the nature of free will in video games with its delightfully meta-textual narrative and witty jokes, the Stanley Parable is actively making a point against playing it. That's right, once you've had your fill of irritating the narrator, unlocking every possible ending and seeing just how long you can stand in a broom closet before the game gives you up for dead, the Stanley Parable has one last test for you stop playing it. To pop the achievement to go outside, players will have to take the ultimate break and do literally anything else for a full five years. You go for a walk, climb a mountain, initiate a hostile takeover of a rival company, anything, as long as it isn't playing this game. And if that's not enough, the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe tasks players with leaving it alone for a whole decade. Well, if you insist, I will take a step outside. Ugh. Was it always this bright? Maybe this wasn't such a good idea.